they, they care about time and not money. And um, one of the most popular courses in the country right now is positive psychology. It's like in the 70s when feminism was really cool to take in college, and then in the 80s it was deconstructionism, and now it's positive psychology. And so everybody knows about it. All the young people know about it. And it's about the science of what makes you happy. It's not a mystery anymore. There are really cool people studying it. In fact, um, Stumbling on Happiness is a great book by a Harvard guy who's um, been studying it forever. And the bottom line is we know that financial happiness is relative to who you're with. So if you're an investment banker in New York City and you make $5 million, you're kind of living in poverty because your friends are making way more than $5 million. And if you live in Wisconsin and you're making $70,000, you are really rich because no one else on the block makes that much. So this is not news to young people. And when you tell them that you're going to motivate them by money, they're totally insulted. And another reason that they're insulted is because they think their time is worth more than their money. Because the things that they want in life are time-oriented, not money-oriented. And in fact, it's probably the things you want as well just um, you went about it differently, but I think we all really value the things that are about time, like relationships and not money. So when you're trying to motivate people, you really need to talk about what they're going to do with their time and, and lay off the money, because it's a real turnoff. I mean, you have to deliver on the money, but don't harp on it. No paying dues. They don't do that. There is no pay, dues paying, so don't try to sell anyone on, you know, if you, if you just stay at the copy machine for one year after a year of making copies, you're going to really have a great career because they're gone in 1.8 years, right? So there's not, there's not that carrot that you would typically have climbing up the ladder. And this is very frustrating to um, almost everyone who has climbed the ladder because once you climb the ladder, you want someone else to be climbing. Otherwise, what are you doing on top, right? So the thing, though, is that I heard Mark earlier talking about how everyone wants meaningful work. And that's across the board. That's not just like old people want meaningful work. That's like the 20-year-old with no work experience wants meaningful work. And it's not actually that unreasonable a thing to ask for. No one has ever asked for it before, but not because they didn't want it at age 20, but because they didn't have the power to ask for it. I think. I mean, my generation, Generation X really wanted it, but we're like, you know, minuscule. We're nothing in the demographic lottery, so we couldn't ask for it. But Generation Y has got a lot of power, and they feel very comfortable saying, I'm not doing your copy machine job. That's nothing to me. I'm not paying dues. So a way to spin that is to say, here's a deal. We'll, we'll make a, a, like, a deal every day. You do my crappy work for me, and then I'll give you mentoring. They love mentoring. Or you do my crappy work for me, and then I'll expose you to people who you wouldn't normally be exposed to. But like, just be real. OK, don't tell them that your crappy job is a good job. It's much better if you just are upfront with them about what you're offering. I mean, they're, they're authentic people, and they would expect the same from you. No working nine to five. I know that it's really comforting to have people work nine to five because then you can watch them all the time. But if you watch this generation, you'll just see them listening to their iPod and doing I am all day. So there's no point in having them in front of you because it'll just piss you off. So, <laughs> so the better thing to do is manage by results. If you fire someone, just fire them for not getting their work done. Don't be like, hey, I've got some great idea for you. Turn off your iPod and then you'll be more productive. Because in fact, this is the most productive generation that's ever like, graced the planet. They can run circles around all of us in the productivity realm because they can listen to their iPod and watch TV and do their work because they did their homework that way for you know, 10 years. So even though you don't understand it, it doesn't mean that um, you need to like, make it go away. And in fact, once you get rid of the 9 to 5 thing and let them work whatever hours they want, here's a surprise, they're going to be in your face all the time anyway because they love mentoring. You would call it micromanaging. They call it mentoring. And they want to know every minute, hey, how'd you like what I did last week? How'd you like what I did right now? What do you think we should be doing at lunch? Do you want to go out for drinks with me? You know, they're going to be in your face constantly. But the only way is if you lay off of them about their, how they work and just trust that they're so productive, you should probably be learning from them in the productivity realm instead of legislating how they're productive. Um.
is they want to be surrounded by time management ninjas. And when you watch those young people online all day um, where you think they're not being productive, the most popular blogs that they're going to are productivity blogs. They're blogs that dissect every single little thing you do every day on your computer and how you can do it faster. So, for example, a young person leaves, most of them have their inboxes totally empty. They sneak up behind you and see your computer and you're like scrolling up and down your inbox looking for the next thing to do. They think you look totally constipated because you kind of are, right? You're like clicking every email you click and don't answer. You're like wasting a little more time. And the young people have, you know, they live by rules. If you open it, you have to do something with it. So that's just one example of like 400 ways that they are extremely productive and it's so hip to be productive that you can like go to a cocktail party with 20 year olds and we'll talk about getting things done. It's a book that like, like you guys read Jack Kerouac 10 times, they read Getting Things Done 10 times. And they're very conversant on um, that productivity is about um, understanding your personal goals and um, self-discipline is about having clear goals. And you know, this is normal 20-year-old talk.